Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Coach Hoke and Coach Eklenski for giving me the opportunity to come back home. I think back when I got here in 2004, realistically, I, I see some familiar faces up here that know me when I got here in 2004. Uh, I guess I really thought of that I'd be here for about a five-year contract and, and away I'd go on somewhere else. But here I am 17 years later uh, with the opportunity to come back home. I think that uh, when you have a chance to be back to where you, what you think of as your new hometown uh, is a very special thing. I think that when you are trying to go and replace someone who's been, for, been here as long as, as Coach Schmidt was, you know, I'm not trying to get these guys to, um, to forget about all the good stuff they've learned from Coach Schmidt. I know, I've known Coach Schmidt for 11 years. And I know he's going to do great things at Syracuse. So I'm not trying to change what they've learned, but I'm hoping to bring a different flair and just a different, you know, just a different angle to things. Because the one thing I do know about this, and it, it started back in 2009 when Coach Hoke first got here, was it was all about the legacy, the legacy that they wanted to build here. And when he left to go to Michigan and Coach Long took over, Coach Long did a great job of sustaining that that legacy. And I think that I think that when Coach Long retired and brought Coach Hoke back to be the head coach. I think, you know, it's important to make sure that that legacy continues. And to just be able to be a part of that legacy and just to be a part of what I know the legacy of San Diego State football is an amazing opportunity. Plus, this is the most I've seen my family in about the past six years. Uh, I don't know if they're – I mean, we still say we love each other, so that's a good deal. Uh, but I really do believe that just the opportunity to come back home and what you now consider your hometown. Because we, we never left the different places I went. All, this was always home base. And just to have that opportunity to come back home, it, it truly is a special feeling. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. And I can't wait to get started against our first game, September 4th against New Mexico State. So if anybody has any questions, fire away. Hey, Mike, uh, this is Lee Hamilton. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Hey, nice to have you back. Hey, um, as you develop from a player uh, into what you became and then went into coaching, which which offensive line coach that you worked under in the NFL had the biggest impact on Mike Goff in terms of his philosophy, learning what, how to do what you do, et cetera? Oh, that's a great question. I think that I, I've been very blessed uh, through – through my playing career to have great coaches. And I would say it would have to be a three-way tie, believe it or not. I was with Paul Alexander in Cincinnati for six years. And in those six years, he taught me so much, and we still communicate to, these, to this day. And then when I was fortunate enough to come back to San Diego and Hudson Houck was here, even though it was just that one year, uh, I learned so much in one year, and I was I was quite mad that Miami opened up the checkbook and stole them from us uh, to go to Miami. And then when Jack Henry and Hal Hunter uh, took over for Carl Mock in the last couple seasons, I think that what I've learned from those three guys and even my college coach, Coach Frank Verducci, I think that to be an efficient coach, you have to be the biggest critic, but you also have to be the biggest fan. I think that you need to – no one to encourage, no one to push, and no one to maybe pull the reins back and just make sure that everybody understands. And that's the one thing that I really learned from, from those four coaches is the ability to make sure that you hold them accountable, but sometimes it, you're not always going to get your point across if it's just in your face all the time. And to follow up to that, in college football, different from the NFL, you might have a 6-7 tackle. You might yeah. have a six one guard. You might have a three hundred ten pound center. What what do you teach the young kids in the developmental stage? Is it is it footwork? Is it brute strength? Is it angles and techniques? What's the biggest thing to impact a nineteen or twenty year old kid at, at San Diego State? I think the main thing is, and Coach Hoke does a great job of bringing this up in, in most team meetings, is fundamentals and technique. Fundamentals and technique are the things that are gonna gonna help you just from those are the ABCs. Actually, technically it's the A B. I didn't give a C, so it would be the A B of it. Uh, I think that if you get develop fundamentals and technique and get them to buy into the fundamentals and technique, it's just like anything else. Then you can start to build on that and make it more difficult. 
put more on their plate. But if they don't understand the basic fundamentals or the basic techniques that you're trying to teach them, I think you're doing them a disservice. Because just like just like in the world of teaching, not every not every not every student learns the same. So sometimes you have to make sure, and you have to you have to pay attention to them as well. Uh, not every kid's going to learn the same. Some kids are slower learners. Some are fast learners. Some need videos. Some need walking through. And so just really paying attention to making sure that they have an understanding of the fundamentals and techniques is what you really want to build on. Mike, thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, John Schaefer, good to see you. You're up next. Great to see all you guys. Uh, Coach, I appreciate your time today. Um, and I want to get to just how camp has gone so far. I know it's only been a few days. Um, you know, what have you seen from your unit and what do you hope to see over the next couple of weeks? Well, I think that anytime you get a chance to to get the work that we have, uh, I heard a lot of the stories about how camp went last year and to just be this far ahead and really just be able to get together has been has been amazing. And I think that what I've seen thus far is I've definitely seen the older guys taking the responsibility of really helping the younger guys along, which is awesome because – Players win games. Co coaches do their best to set up the players to go out and succeed. But when the when the players start coaching players and they start helping each other and encouraging each other, and they go ahead and if somebody has a bad rep and one of the older guys comes over and kind of helps them along, that helps. That makes our job easier. And I think that that's one of the things I want to continue to develop. So these these young these younger players, they might look up the coaches, but I remember being in their shoes, and I looked up to the older players, the players like a Billy Dunkel, a Zach Thomas, an Alma, Chris Martinez, who's been here a long time, Desmond Besant. I think that you look at that core group of older players, it's important for them to understand that they're, while yes, they have to take the time to invest in themselves, they also have to take their time to invest in, in this program because that's whose hands the program is going to be in when they eventually graduate or when their time is up here. So just to see the development of the players really taking ownership in the unit has been amazing. I feel like with San Diego State a lot on both sides of the ball, we talk about physicality and how important that is. You know, As you know, San Diego State has been among the best running teams in America probably over the last decade. San Diego State's offensive line has been highly regarded for a good portion of that period as well. How important is, when we talk about physicality, I mean, it's easy to say that, but but how do you kind of preach that, and how is that impactful on a football field? Well, I, th I think that the, it's one thing to say it, one thing to do it. So you have to find your way to make that sink into, into your player's head that that's just how it's going to be. And... Uh, I remember the opening opening uh, conversation I had with them to start camp. I said, toughness is not something you're born with. Physicality is not something you're born with. I think that it's something that is is a learned behavior and it's real and it's not learned. It's not learned at the at the top of the mountain. It's learned when you're in the valley and when things are tough and when things are hard. So as we start going into camp and at, I know camps have changed drastically since I was a player. I think that you have to make sure that when you're tired and when you can't see when that first game is going to be, that's when you have to really push yourself to go out there and give it your best effort and develop that physicality because that's when it's that's when it's that's when it's learned. It's learned when you don't want to go out and play. It's learned when you don't feel your best. And I think that's you look at a lot of the pro athletes out there. They all don't wake up and just feel awesome to go, you know, Tom Brady, I'm sure, even even though he's found the fountain of youth, I'm sure at 43 or 83 or however old he is, I think that I don't think he wakes up every day and is is awesome to go to practice. But that's why he's sustained as long as he as he has because when he knows when he, it's time to get tough and it's time to go out and perform, he goes out and does that. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thanks, John. Uh, we'll go to Kurt. Hey, Mike, uh, good to meet you and good to see you out here. I um, wanted to ask, when you ended your NFL career, you probably could have uh, gone golfing, gone sitting on the beach or a hundred other things. What compelled you to want to be a college coach? Well, first of all, my wife told me I had to go do something else. I wasn't just going to sit around, drink beer and golf all day. Uh, so that was a, uh, that's as honest of an answer I'm going to give you. Um, I think that, I think that when I got older, I think one of the things that helped me 
as I got older was the understanding of more of the game than just going out and playing. And I think that as I got older, just like I'm trying to help these younger kids look up to the older kids for tips so they don't always have to come to the coach, I, I feel like as I started to get that way towards the end of my career, I really liked sharing the knowledge I had. And I think that sometimes what ends up happening is, especially in the NFL, you got it's a great job. Being an NFL player, next being a husband, next being a dad, greatest job I've ever had. If there was a senior league, I'd be there, not coaching. But I think that when you have that knowledge and you have the capacity to do the long hours and put the stress on yourself to know that your job relies on 18- and 22-year-olds going out and doing a job, I like that stress. I like putting that on me. I like seeing people succeed. And I think that when you go ahead and, and have that itch, I think you have to go at least explore it. And I think that that's probably when I first felt the, the need to go to go and uh, get into coaching. And Coach Hoke was Coach Hoke was a great mentor to me back in 2010 when I volunteered here. And he made me as a volunteer come and do the hours that the coaches did. So I had a full fever of what it was like to actually be in the coaching world. Because I remember back in my younger days at training camp, coaches looking at us players going, yeah, you guys get to go home. We're here for another four hours. And so for Coach Hoke to take me under his wing and say, hey, come live the life. And if it's not the life for you, then, then don't do it. Go, co- go coach high school, go volunteer, go do this and that. But from, from day one, I was hooked, and here we are about nine years later. So many professional players, they, of course, have to focus on themselves and, and what it takes for them to be the best. And sometimes that can hinder their ability once they become a coach and trying to convey what they know to players in teaching. Were there any struggles early on for you in, in how, learning how to communicate and, and pass some of those things along? I think that sometimes, and I and I always have to correct myself and, and make sure that I check myself, is sometimes I get really excited and I might be speaking too fast. And so one of the things that I've always had to do is after, if I feel like I've been talking too long, I'm going to stop, pause, and I'm going to ask the players if they understand and if they truly understand what I'm trying to tell them. Because if they do not understand, I really want them to ask questions because that's important. Hey, football, football, is a, football is an easy game made complicated by, by coaches. And so the one thing I want our players to do is I want them to have the ability to play fast, play without fear, and just have a lot of fun. Because it, this is – I tell them all the time. I, at a certain time, I thought I, thought I was going to play till I was 50. I thought I was going to be the Tom Brady of offensive linemen, still rolling through it, but you know my time ended at, at 34. This is the best time they'll have, and the thing I want them to do is I don't want them to think too much. I want them to have the confidence in themselves. I want them to be able to go out there and just execute their plays, and good, bad, or different, we're rolling on to the next play. Because at the end of the day, it's a, a pass-fail. You either won a game or you didn't. If you failed, how do we fix it? If you passed, how do we fix it? the little things, and get even better for the next week's opponent. From watching a couple of practices, it seems like you like to still jump in there and really show what you're trying to get across. Well, I, I, do, have, I do have a rule. Uh, first of all, I, I try to stay in shape because I always tell these guys, I'll give you a week. I'll, I'll give you one game. All right, so if, if, if the Rams or anybody's listening, I can, I'll give you a week. Might have to be there in the bye week, but I'll give you one week, one game. All right, we'll see how – we'll kick the tires one last time. But I always want – my, my belief is that if I can do it at 45, these young players can do it at 18 to 22. And to show them, I think, instills them that, hey, this is how he's doing it. Try to emulate. Play a little game of uh, Simon Says or follow the leader. And so if I can do it, I want them to show them what I mean because it's one thing to say it, but to actually go out and demonstrate it, I think, is a, is a different thing for them. And I think that's the one thing I, I like being able to do because I, I like getting in there. I like uh, mixing it up with them because it, it's fun, and, and it does. It keeps you fun. Why do you think so many coaches keep coaching? All right, because it's, it's fun. It's fun to beat around kids. It's, and if I get too old to jump in, well, then it might be time to finally have me go out and go golfing and drink beers. Um, 
any guys in your your offensive line room that you see who could play at the next level or show that potential at this point? I think they all got the potential. I think every one of them has the potential. But my job is is to make sure that that they believe that they can do it. Because just because I want them to do it doesn't mean that they're going to. So my job as a coach is to make sure that they have every tool that I've learned and every tool that Coach Gary Bernardi and Coach Ryan Crum, the guys that the other two coaches who are in the room with us, that they have every tool to set themselves up. So I do think that everyone has the ability to do it. It's just how do you train yourself, how do you invest in yourself, and how do you get ready to, to truly, if that is your goal, you have to understand it's, it's hard. And I think today, in today's society, a lot of people just think that it's easy and you just wake up and do it. And to get them to understand it's hard work and it's sustained hard work. It doesn't just come from, from one practice or one game, but it's something that happens all the time. To get them to understand and get them to buy into themselves, I do think that everyone has, has that ability. There's a lot of experience returning on the line, but a couple of the guys have moved around. What's the biggest things over the next three weeks that they need to improve on to be ready for the season? Fundamentals and technique. Fundamentals and technique. Co Coach Schmidt did a, did a great job, and that's, you know, I'm not trying to change anything that Coach Schmidt did. The thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring my own little flair and maybe help them in, in, in a different way. But I think, again, it's just the development of doing the same things over and over again. We have a thing called everyday drills. We do the same things over and over to develop that muscle memory that really helps them know that without even thinking, as soon as they hear a play, boom, they know what foot they got to step with. They know who's coming with them in a block. They know where their, where their help is, where they're vulnerable. And to just sustain that over the next three weeks, I think will really, will really help them and, and set us up to have a successful, to have a successful campaign.